today we'll be doing a couple of test cuts. The first one we will do with the wrong settings so that you can see what's going to happen and how to correct it from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load in a new file in the main program. I'm going to go into my import file section here. Uh, I want to do this welcome sign that I have already preloaded into my import section. So I'm going to click it and I'm going to click this piece of paper with the green arrow so I can import it into my main work area. It is currently 700 by 523 inches, a little too big for what I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down. So I'm going to select everything, bring it down to, I'm looking for something closer to 20 inches. And now it is reading 20 by 14. Now that I've scaled down, I'm going to just look through all the lead-ins, make sure that nothing is incorrect. Now I see one little pierce here. This is too small of a detail for anything usable so I'm going to highlight that and delete it by just hitting the delete button. You can also use this red X up here which is when you hover over it shows you the delete hotkey. And I'm going to scroll over here because I see another point over here that doesn't seem to add much to my design. I'm going to just delete that one as well. I am now going to import this into the main work area. I'm hitting the green check mark up here. And once I do that, now the first thing I need to do is just hold my table to make sure that it's in the correct position. So I'm going to lift my torch up to right about there and then bring it to that front left hand corner of the table and then hit this reference XYZ button, this little gray button right here. And once I do that, you'll notice again that my uh, position coordinate uh, information now shows zero for my X, zero for my Y, and five inches for my Z, which is what I have it set to. And that's perfect. That's what I'm looking for to make sure my table is correctly homed. Now the next step is to set the project material level. So I'm going to bring it over my torch to a piece of material and I'm going to bring it down so it's touching the material. And when I do this, I ideally don't want to do it on a corner because corners tend to bend a little, but somewhere in the middle it has less give, so it gives me a more accurate um, level for my material. And once my, my torch is touching the material, I'm going to hit this green Z equals zero button right here. And then what you'll see is that my material moved down just a little bit just to show that my table is now aware of where the material is, should be. So every time it's going to do a pierce, it's going to come touch down and then lift itself back up based off of this value. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my torch up a little bit and move it to where I want it to actually start cutting. So I'm going to bring it down a little over here, a little over here. And then once it's in this position, I'm going to hit my project position button. Now because I'm starting on the left hand side of my material on the bottom left hand corner, I'm going to hit the bottom left hand project position button. If I were starting on another corner or even in the middle, I would just hit the corresponding arrow to that. So let me do that. And then what you'll see is that my project has now moved to the bottom left hand corner where it shows my torch. And now I can hit this blue trace button just to verify visually that it's actually going to cut where I want it to. Just going to go around the perimeter of my art project and it looks like everything is going to fit exactly where I wanted it to go. So now I'm going to start my first test cut. Okay, so my first test cut has finished. Now, as you can see, I used on purpose the wrong speed settings for my material. So as you can see from this first cut, it's kind of welded into my frame. It, I can't pop it out, I can't move it, it's, it's just stuck in here. This is essentially scrap. Now I have mine set to 400 and 200 for my cut speed two. So according to the hypertherm book, this value should be for the 14 gauge that I'm cutting should be 225 and for cut speed two, it should be about 112 more or less. Now I know from experience, that these speeds are a little too fast for what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna slow them down just a little bit more so that I get a slightly better result. And I'm just gonna bring it down for 200 to 100. If you are doing your first few test cuts, we recommend that you use the hypertherm manual settings for your base values and then adjust from there. Now that I've got my settings correctly in there, I'm gonna do another cut and see how these results come out. Okay, so my second cut has been completed and as you can see this one does pop up and now it's much cleaner than my first one. It's no longer welded. Now there are still a few minor issues here. As you can see the lasso of my cowboy is kind of been lost a little bit. Now this can be corrected with an offset which I'll show you in a second here. Um, the other thing that you'll notice here is there's a few burn marks on some parts of my horse and on some of the trees. What this tells me is that the, the torch was probably moving a little too slow for these smaller cuts. That is the cutting speed 2 setting. Cutting speed 2 controls curves and holes that are smaller than 1 inch. 
When it's doing things that are that small, it needs to slow down a little bit so that it gets you perfectly round curves and perfectly round holes. I can probably bring this back to something like 220 for my cut speed one and 110 for my cut speed two and get a better result. Now for the lasso, this was caused because it's just too thin of a line and as you can see from my art design, it's actually got two lines and when you're applying that much heat on a, on a thin line, a lot of the times it just eats away at it. To fix this, you can actually set an offset. So when you go to your import file section here and you bring in your horse or whatever design it is you're looking for and you scale it down to the correct size that you want, 20, I'm going to scale it down one more time to 20. So it's exactly 20 by 14 where I'm looking for. You'll see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. You see currently the green line is where it's going to cut. If I turn on an offset, my green line moves a little bit away and the gray line is showing you where it was originally. What I'm looking to do here is just set my offset to a value that will increase the thickness of this line so that it stays there even when it does a double cut. So now that I've increased my my tip to about 0 0.065, which means that my offset is set to 0 0.03. This will give me a much better result on my final cut. And my overall shape hasn't changed dramatically, so it's still going to be 20 by 15, give or take, plus or minus a few thousands. And now my, my lasso will come out correctly, and all other small details will come out correctly. And once I've got this set up, I can then hit the green check mark and import that and do the final cut on that. The other little tip that I want to give everyone is when it comes to words. As you can see from my design, all of my words are connected to the outer frame. Now a lot of times I get questions about numbers and letters like O and 8 where they try to have the middle cut out uh, and the outside cut out but still keep the overall shape without all of it falling in. If I didn't have my 0 or my O connected to the outside frame, it would just fall right in and leave a big hole there, which is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to be visually an O that you can easily identify quickly. So in order to do that, I make sure that my inner circle is still good, but my outer circle connects to something that holds it in. You'll see the same for my overall horse design and the cowboy. Everything is connected on the outer frame with these trees, with the little foliage that you see here. And then the cowboy itself is, gives it more reinforcement by connecting itself to the sea. And then all the way down here, it finishes up over here. So all of that holds the art piece together. That process is called tabbing. You see a lot of this when you're, you've got a lot of experience with your designs and the end result. You understand that you have to tab a lot of things that you don't want to fall out. Other than that, nothing more for this video. If you have any questions about anything that we talked about, please send us an email to info at stvcnc.com or give us a call at 888-701-7101 and we'd gladly help you with any questions you may have.